and I don't want to take shelter be, behind that. Um, my colleague, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Sibanda, is informing me that he also got a message that uh, uh, Colonel Kininda, uh, Mangena, Colonel Mangena, is unable to come. Mangena. To, yes. Oh, okay. Mangena. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Is unable to come because he's also sick. So that then put us in a position where we, I'm not so sure whether we need to proceed with that application in the absence of those two, of, of those two uh, experts. Okay, so when, when will your experts be available for a consultation with the state experts for him to have access to the exhibits which he wants to examine and test? I can tell you now, yes, my registrar Rose phoned me during the recess to say, I think Advocate Maloui had arranged that uh, the two experts, together with Geninda and the state, I think, had arranged that they should meet during the recess. And I said no. That is so, yes, ma'am. I refused because I'm being accused of colluding with the state that these <laughs> exhibits are before court in other words. Yes. Although technically they are in the control of Geninda. Yes. Is that not so? And that is so. Yeah, because in South Africa for some reason we don't have safes in courts yeah. where exhibits of court which are before the court are put in a court safe, they normally go back to either the SAP 13 safe in whatever police station, yes, which is actually incorrect. Yes. And I said, you need a court order for that type of thing because these exhibits should be brought to court so that your expert and the state expert and you yourself and Mr. Sibanda should actually see them. And then they are handed over in op open court. And then you agree, the experts and the councils agree when these tests would be conducted and in whose presence. Because there's a possibility, I've, I've been long in the game, there's a possibility those two bullets or cartridges or snippets of cartridges can be lost. Are you with me? That's a possibility, yes. Ma yeah, because. And that's quite correct. There's evidence that some of the evidence was planted and what have you. And so maybe your experts would be getting half the exhibits and if the court is not there to supervise it, who is to say what ever happens has happened? So that was my reasoning. And I've brought three decisions, if you want me to read them for you, which dictate how this exigency should be conducted. Okay. So I was not I was not being impossible. Because Mr. Baloui wanted to hand over with Gininda <laughs> the exhibits to your expert. Yes, without the court being away. Uh, yes, actually we, sh we, we we were putting the cut before the horse. Yeah, it quite. should have been done through a court order. That's it. Yeah. Yes. So, I don't know, you must then arrange for those exhibits to be here in court. Because it's not like an exhibit of a motor vehicle. Yes, my lord. These are sensitive exhibits. Allegedly, there's a firearm and two spent bullets or whatever. Yes. Okay. So, there's no problem. As it please the court, my lord. You can arrange. Yes. I don't know when you want to arrange it, arrange it for. I would, I, would, I would check out with my expert and also liaise with the state on to the availability of Mr. Uh, Mr. Mangena. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm informed that he's, he's, he's down with flu, so we'll also have to identify a date on which it might be better. And, and even Kendall Geninda oh, should be here because uh, I, I know... I think I saw him. I saw him oh, today. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah, he should be here because those yes. exhibits are in his possession. That is so, man. So he's going to take them out of whatever envelope or cage or whatever he's saved them in and 
put them here so that everybody sees them. As it is the court, mm. may I then suggest that we stand this issue down and then during um, our, our adjournment we'll have a quick chat with my colleague and then to map a way forward and then okay, we'll come and inform the court accordingly. Fine. Thank you, Madam. Mr. Sabani? As a copy is my lord, that is in order. Indeed, um, K uh, Brigadier Gininda was present earlier on in court today. I will proceed with this witness. Can the witness be reminded that she's still yeah, in the house? Okay, yes, still in the house, yes. Mr. Tani. <coughs> right. Lord, we were busy with exhibit JJ7 in brackets A. Thank you for making this screen. My Lord, can I help the witness to connect the monitor? Oh, I see you. Ready? Okay. I want us to refer back to the question that I asked you before the recess, which you were about to answer before there was an objection. I'm just trying to get the question. Yes. You have the addendum to your statement. Yes, I do. Okay. We are still busy with the tower named Muleleki. to exhibit triple G1. Yes. This would be on page 17 of 18. It is the exhibit with the maps. And I also asked you the distance between the crime scene as well as the tower. Do you remember that? Yes. Can you place the distance on record? This is the distance between which towers? Moleleki Tower. Moleleki Tower. As well as the crime scene. Okay, okay, fine. crime scene and towards the bottom south of the page is the Molaleki Tower 
and that distance is 6.3 kilometers. Which is Maui Buga to Mepe, and the low distance is 6.3 meters. Kilometers. 6.3 kilometers. Thank you. And then you also testified regarding um, the information on page 667 as of 1189 on exhibit JJ1. On page 60? 667. 667. And 1 of 1189. Yes, this would be triple J1, page 667 of double 189. And then there's a phone that belonged to Ms. Kelly Kumalo that recorded the Muleleki Tower or reflecting the Muleleki Tower. That's where we're at when we are joined. Yes, that, that activity is um, the last activity <coughs> on page 667. page 667, Yes, um, okay. And then, <coughs> what I was trying to get at then was the phone belonging to the other phone belonging to Ms. Kelly Kumalo, the one belonging to Mr. Longotwala, and the one belonging to the late Sinzo Meiwa. Around that time of um, after 2200, on the 26th of October, did it ever record the Muleleke Tower? Muleleke Tower. As it is the court, that um, the state is alleging that Kelly Kumara currently <coughs> had uh, five numbers. Six. Uh, yes, had six numbers that were identified to be allegedly belonging to her. Mm -hmm. Now, when the state says the phone, the phone, the phone, I think this is very specific, but it, 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 the number that the state is actually referring to, not a phone. We don't know whether the state is talking of a gadget. Well, it was a Samsung, a Nokia, an iPhone. Uh, 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 yeah, this is correct. You've got to specify because there's evidence that uh, Ms. Kumalo had six numbers, if I recall the evidence. <laughs> As the campus will do that. Ma'am, just go back to exhibit triple G1. Yes. And then the phone number that recorded the Muleleki Tower. Which number is that? The number reflecting the Muleleki Tower is 072 938 2498. Which is the phone in there? Yeah, Tower. The number of your Zero seven two nine three eight two four nine eight. So that's Kelly's number, according to, to the That's correct, my lord. Thank you, Lord. The number of the human are you put in a guy and then let's go back to your addendum. And let's just identify the other number belonging to Ms. Kelly Kumala so that we move together. The other number belonging to Ms. Kumala is 082-704-4358. We find that on exhibit triple J1 under the addendum. Which any food in number of the car, Miss Kelly Kumal, in number of your phone at zero eight two seven zero four four three five seven five eight five eight five eight. I beg your pardon, my Okay. 
So the number belonging to Ms. Kelly Kumalo, the one ending with 4358, at the time when the number ending with 2498 recorded the Moleleki Tower, where was the number ending with 4358? On page 1650 of 4649, you would then find the data of 4358, round about 2154. The number ending 4358 is on voicemail and we have an undefined <coughs> tower. Okay, let's just start here. Okay. And then around twenty two hundred, the number belonging to the deceased ending with five five one. Can you locate, locate it? Five, five, five. We are on page 362, round about 2201, the number ending 9551 reflects the tower clinic's phosphorus. Okay, who let you to your page 362? The number of the clinic is 551. Yeah, you say, use the number at tower, say, for the bathroom. And then just lastly, the number belonging to Longwe Tala, ending with 0436, around 2200 on the 26th of October. Bear with me, I'm going through the pages. Ooh. I am on page four, six, three, four. The number ending 0436, round about 2216, shows the tower of Pong Hotso. Okay, who will you pay for 4634? Can you learn the number of the 0436? And it's about 2216, 16 minutes past 10, it's soon. That is Thank you. And then are you able to tell this court if the number of Miss Kilikomalo ending with 4358, the number of the deceased, Mr. Senzu Meiwa, the number belonging to Longwe Twala ever recorded the Moleleki Tower on the 26th of October, no, 2014. Not at all. Okay, now, see the number of the guys, 
So, just also to remind us, for a phone to record a tower, what happens? You have to be um, in the vicinity of that tower in order for the cell phone to be picked up. Are you then able to conclude at this stage that the number ending 2498 uh, was at the vicinity of the Moleleki Tower on the 26th of October, just after 2200? Yes, I can confirm that it was at the Molaleki Tower, but the time indicates 21.52 on the 26th of October. Thank you. Now let us refer back to exhibit triple J7 in brackets A. And here we have information on the page. Page 14. Page 14. Can you explain what is depicted on page 14? Exhibit triple J7, capital A. On page 14, I have um, a site distance between uh, Bessonia. And Lefta and Frieda. What is Nana to pay for Tim? What is the distance to Sula and the Sonia? Who we are there and Lefta and Frieda? It's in time. Can you place the information on page 15 on record? Page 15, the distance between Lefter and Frieda and Bassonia is 4.3 kilometers. Okay, let's proceed to page 16. What is depicted on page 16? On page 16, it is the distance from or to the Molaleki Tower and the crime scene. Proceed to page 17. Can you the information on page 17 on record? Page 17 is the distances from the Molaleki Tower to and from other sites. On page 17, the distance to the Molaleki Tower is the distance are you able to place the distances to the other sides? Yes. From from Parque to Mololeki 
86.3 kilometers. Australia, the park, we are emulating the distance of Kona, it's 6.3 kilometers. From Sprite View to Molaleki, 7.5 kilometers. Australia, the Sprite View, we are emulating the distance of Kona, it's 7.5 kilometers. From Fosloris to Molaleki, 4.1 kilometers. Oh, Bushigela, eh, Fosloris, Ubria, and Leleki, the distance is 4.1 kilometers. Fosloris Square to Molaleki is 5.2 kilometers. Oh, Bushigela, eh, Fosloris, Ubria, and Leleki, this is by 5.2 kilometers. From Popang, Hotso, to Molaleki, it's 5.4 kilometers. Okay. Now let's proceed to page 18. Can you place the information that is? Yes, this is an overview of distances between Palm Flats, uh, Moroglod, and Queenswood. Can you give me that again, please? Palms Flats. Moroglod. Nase Moroglod. And Queenswood. Nase Queenswood. And then let's refer the code to exhibit DD5E, Roman figure 1. Which page are we looking at? We'll go to page, page 2. Page 2. Two. Yes. Let's add towards the bottom of page two. Yes. Do you are you able to pick up the Queenswood Tower there? Um yes I can. Um four number ending. Goodness, um, six eight nine zero on the twentieth of August. At it starts at sixteen twenty three forty nine seconds. The number ending six eight nine zero. The date is the twentieth of August twenty twenty. At sixteen twenty three forty nine seconds. Okay. And then the Murakhlut Tower, are you able to pick it up on the exhibit DD5E from in figure 1? <coughs> I go through this data. Do you 
perhaps have a page number for me? Not yet, but we can okay. stay with the Queen's Suite Tower and then we'll go back to that when we... Um, on this map that is appearing on page 18, are you able to tell which area is, is being depicted there? Looks like maybe Pretoria. It's the overview of Pretoria, I would say. And then I see there's a differ there's a distance between Queenswood and Valeria. Are you able to place the distance on record? Actually Valeria Valeria is in between Queenswood and uh, Palmer Flats, and that distance is 2.6 kilometers. And then the distance of 1.11 kilometers. That is between Morochlud and Queenswood Towers. The distance is in a year 1.11 kilometers with Morochlud Tower. Fine, we, we can move on. Let's stay with page 3 now. Exhibit DD 5 Roman DD 5 E Roman figure 1. Page 3. Yes. From the start of the page towards the end of the page, the Tower is either undefined or it's Queenswood Tower. Are you able to confirm that? Yes, that is correct. So, are, are you able to comment only on what happened on this page? regarding the position of the device. The cell phone was in the vicinity of Queenswood throughout this page. There's been no other movement. And the trend continues to page four. You confirm? Correct, yes. And also on page five. Objection. Mm. The, the, the witness must specifically indicate what is it that she is agreeing to. Because I'm noting for instance that on page three, the state says. Um, those are that's information that is exclusively recording the Queenswood area, but there are portions there that are written undefined. We don't know what that undefined would stand for. That's, that's how she testified, Mr. Mr. Nisi. Mr. I say that's how she testified. She yes. says on page three yes. there are only two indicators undefined. And Queenswood. Am I correct? Yeah. Go to me, That's correct. Yeah. And then further on on page four, the state says, Are you then agreeing with that information that is contained in there? Then she says, Yes. 
then specifically she needs to put it on record yeah, fine. that she specifically she, she's agreeing to. Okay, fine. Because there's a lot of information there. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, I do confirm that the towers reflect as Queenswood and there are undefined towers as well on the following page. Same as the page three, in other words. That is correct, my lord. Okay, we'll not continue the rest of the exhibit. We'll take the whole day to go. Just what you have now, please, on record from page one to page five. Are you also able to confirm that the number ending with 16890 in this set of data that was admitted by the defense already that there were activities? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> And there were outgoing calls and incoming calls. Yes. Logo, we are going to see which one who put a little bit poor man at all. Then, you know what's passing across me? Maybe we need an engineer before I forget this thought. You correctly say that a certain number impinges or triggers a particular tower, right? Yes. When it is in the vicinity yes. of that tower. Correct. Vicinity is not defined. You can't say vicinity minimum. It means a minimum distance, assuming. Assuming this is the, the tower. Meaning a minimum distance in the vicinity could be, let's say, two meters. Let's make it ridiculous. It will impinge on the tower. You are not able to say the distance. All you can say, it's in the vicinity. So, what I can then say is that it's in the radius of the tower. That's it, yeah. But initially, I did say, in terms of distances, in a built-up area, it can be from anything I, from 500 yeah, I you. to, let's say, five kilometers in, in a build-up build area. Up area. But opposed to a rural area mm. where the towers are further apart, you can go from anything up to 15 to 20 kilometers apart. Okay. Okay. okay, yes, thanks, my lord. So, let me just build on what the court said. So, the triggering of this um, tower and the use of the phone is it something that happens automatically on the phone? Or there should be some someone or somebody using such a particular device. It is someone using that particular device. I, I this is not an exhibit, it's part of my information. So just to show you, my lord, there's the tower there. It should be in this vicinity or the radius of the tower. Well, that must be headed up. Every document. <laughs> yeah, no, fine. I'm just saying this to the witness. <laughs> you can't say, hey, this is my, 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 my. Just give it an, uh, an exhibit number, sir. That is confidential information from oh. the company that 
does our work. So I have to get permission from them. No, 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 no. Just show it to the defense. Sure. Okay. Because nothing In we should put. It's Hello, show it to the defense, please. And no. they must then appreciate that they have seen that confidential document, and then they can even convey that confiden confidentiality of the doc document to their accused or so, their clients, yes. but not to the general public. Yes. So I will basically, agree, wait, wait, wait. I will agree. So that there mustn't be arguments that uh, this evidence, which was confidential but was not made available to the defence and the accused. So basically. I've just. Mr. No, we, we agreed. Hello. I, 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 I know in the in the apartheid era. Hello, in the apartheid era, a judge would view a confidential document yes. and not show it to the defence or the yes. accused. Yes. And the world was still kind then. People would say, <laughs> when the judge says, "I saw this," they would say, "I will go It would just be taken. But you see, in this transparency era, the defense must see that, the accused must see that, except the broader public. Okay. Yeah, so show it to the defense, and then they can show it to their clients. Before we continue, ma'am. Language level is a phenomenon. Oh, Chief Judge, if I never been born, by born, you know, if I never been born, you know, by born, in Pico, lay as some citizens in Pierre, and Jim will say busy. Abba made the new affair by born, Nanny Ban Bonis alone. Who are they with it? If the Zoe and a pedal, who are we in Pico Yak and Pedal? What are Essay Kumen I will like and talk? Basically, the court matter, just everything, so I can start look at this information here. To me, it appears like this is how towers are working, so I don't know what is confidential about how towers are working. The witness will explain. That is confidential to my work. If you want an understanding of how towers are work, you by all means can get it off Google. So that I presented yes. just to show you the tower and make a ring around it to show you the radius or the vicinity. That is why it doesn't have distances on there. It's just to give you an overview of what the tower is and how the information is drawn from yeah, but there. How, then what is confidential about how towers are working? You know, the is, information is, on that document yes. is not for public knowledge. Oh, okay. That is why I said to you, look at the picture of the tower only so that you get a better understanding of how it works. Mr. Nisi hasn't heard about cyber espionage. <laughs> I, We've I, I, just I, I, come I, 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 out of it on Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was actually working in that section. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Cyber crime. Uh, okay. yes, yeah, that's why it's confidential. Okay, fine. Yes. Um, um, show it to your clients, please. I, I Let's, hello, hello, hello. Let's show it to your clients, all of you, yeah. so that we give the document back to the witness, because it's not going to be given an exhibit. It doesn't really appear, but that this is a trade switch. Oh, that's okay. So, explain to your, okay, yeah. you'll explain to your clients. Yes, I will Fine. explain. Fine, no problem. Okay, give the document back to the witness. Thank you. Yes, you can proceed to explain. Where did we stop? just repeat that so we could continue. Remember, you wanted to refer to the information in that document. Oh, yes. So basically what I wanted to explain is that if the tower is here... Objection, if, Objection, if the information is privileged and the witness is not willing to, to disclose that information, then no evidence should be invited from the witness on the document which the witness has indicated that is privileged. It cannot be disclosed to us. It cannot be disclosed to our clients. No, the witness has never said that. I said it must be disclosed to the defense and your clients. Why do we have problems with simple matters? But my lord, the witness objected. The witness said the information is confidential. And then I overruled him. 
Then if 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 the, 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 that yes. information was overruled, it means you must be supplied with that information. No. You must be supplied I, I overruled her to say, even if it's confidential, the defense and the accused can have access to that confidentiality. Yes, my lord. So access, what is the problem? Access meaning that we must have copies of this information. We must <coughs> relate the information to our clients. We but I just said that, Mr. Mishalol, I don't understand. Who in this court doesn't understand what I'm saying? Before my lord, hello, hello, wait. Continue. Where's that document? Just give it to Mr. Sibande and Mr. Mgomezuru, Tamusipiri, Nisi, Mujaki, and yourself. And then you guys take it to a Tuesday. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, my lord. My lord, if we can get just a few minutes adjournment so that we can relate the document to our clients if the witness is going to be referring to this document. She has already referred to it. What's the time this is? 11.17. Okay, we come back at uh, half past. Well, then,